Welcome, my irradiated brothers and sisters, to another video examining the weapons of the Fallout series. This is the first of a series looking at the big guns of Fallout. Now, there are a lot, however, I have chosen to not include all the energy weapon big guns and instead feature those in the series that are dedicated to that type of energy weapon. For example, my laser weapon videos cover all laser weapons including the big guns. So this video will be comprised of large automatic weapons, launchers, and other weapons that kind of fall into the gray areas. Now, let's take a look at some big guns. And no, that's not a euphemism. The minigun has been in most Fallout games to date, starting in the first Fallout. It is known in Fallout and Fallout 2 as the Rockwell CZ-53 personal minigun and according to the game is capable of firing at rates up to 60,000 rounds per minute. There are a few in-game oddities, one being that it uses 5mm ammunition, which barely rounds up to 0.2 of an inch, making it a very small round. The second oddity is that the in-game description says that it is a chain gun, which is not true. In my lasers video, I went over the difference between a Gatling gun, a minigun, and a chain gun, and one of the main defining features of a chain gun is that it has one barrel, which is obviously not applicable to this weapon. The third oddity is the insanely large 60,000 rounds per minute rate of fire. Real world miniguns max out around 6,000 rounds per minute, a full tenth of fallouts. This rate of fire is nowhere close to what is shown in game either. The CZ-53 was an old design and being phased out for the CV-57 Avenger, but they are visually identical. They most closely resemble the General Electric M134 minigun without the flash suppressor, although they have been modified to be held by the user rather than mounted. The new minigun has improved gel fin cooling and chromium plated bores. The chromium will make it more resistant to wear, and the gel fin cooling may refer to silica gel fins. Fallout 2 introduces the Vindicator, that based on the in-game description, should outdo the Avenger in every sense. It can shoot at a rate of 90,000 rounds per minute, uses caseless ammo, and fires an advanced 4.7mm round. Given this, it is ironic that in the game it actually shoots slower than the other miniguns, and has less ammo capacity. Perhaps this was done to offset the greater damage the weapon has so as not to make a god tier weapon. There is no real world weapon that would closely resemble this gun and the shroud over the barrels would seem to restrict any heat transfer benefit the rotating barrels would normally have. This could be doubly problematic due to the higher rate of fire that the Vindicator has. Although the CZ-53 is the same base minigun in Fallout 3, it has a large magazine beneath the weapon and a large backpack that the user wears. The function of the backpack isn't immediately clear, however I see reference to it being an ammunition box which would make this weapon unique since the player is never seen holding ammo for other weapons that isn't being actively consumed. Like you don't see your player character running around with a few mini nukes in their pocket. According to the concept art, the portion on the opposite end of the barrel is a small generator to power the weapon because all miniguns need an external power source to operate. Eugene is a Fallout 3 unique variant that increases durability and firepower. Fallout New Vegas has the same base minigun with the unique variant, the Avenger, which is a callback to Fallout and Fallout 2, where it has slightly higher firepower and increased rate of fire, making it have the highest DPS in the whole game. In Fallout 4 and 76 we get a slight redesign where the box-like magazine is now a drum and the grips are slightly different as well. The electric generator looks more integrated into the design and they completely ditched the backpack. The Ash Maker is the unique variant in Fallout 4, dealing additional fire damage. Fallout Tactics has the Avenger as the basic minigun, which appears mostly the same except it is now chambered in a 5.56mm round which is still smaller than the 7.62 by 51 mm NATO rounds that modern miniguns use. The name might also be a reference to the GAU-8 Avenger, which is a 30 mm Gatling cannon on the notorious A-10 aircraft. The Vindicator is the upgraded minigun in tactics that fires a 7.62 round, just like in our world, and has a slightly different appearance. 
The in-game description erroneously states that ammunition is caseless and it has six barrels, when in fact it has five, and this description may have simply been copied from the Fallout 2 description. Even Fallout Brotherhood of Steel has a minigun, and while the in-game model is next to useless to discern any details, the concept art shows something similar to all the other designs, just with an ammo drum in the back of the weapon. The last note on this weapon is that the 5mm round is very small. However, perhaps it was made so small so that the weapon could be wielded by a single person, reducing the weight of the ammo of course, but also the weapon as it wouldn't need to withstand as great of forces involved with larger rounds. If that is the case, then this would be mostly useful for laying down suppressing fire, or as a strictly anti-personnel gun, as it would lack energy necessary for greater armor penetration. Fallout 76 introduces the Gatling Gun, which is a truly old school design and modeled after the US Colt Model 1874 Gatling Gun. Richard Jordan Gatling was the inventor of the Gatling Gun, and it looks like someone took an old Gatling Gun from a museum or something, and although it is usually too large and heavy to carry, have modified it to be able to be carried by a single person, have given it a large front sight, has shortened the overall length and modified it to accept a more modern round, which is the same 5mm round instead of the 4070 round the original Gatling was designed to use. A unique variant called the Resolute Veteran carries the suppressor legendary effect and is a Civil War reference since the Gatling gun first saw service in the American Civil War. Fallout 2 features a weapon known only as the Light Support Weapon, which is a solid mid-game weapon. It is a bullpup design and is a very close rendition of the Enfield L86A1, which is the obvious inspiration, just sporting a longer barrel. It shoots 223 rounds in game, but it may be chambered in 5.56 by 45 mm NATO rounds like the real life weapon, which can fire 223 rounds. Introduced in the Lonesome Road add on for Fallout New Vegas, Red Glare is a different take on the traditional rocket launcher. This prototype rocket launcher launches multiple smaller rockets in quick succession from a 13 round canister. Remember that number. The design is nothing like the common missile launcher and is also unlike anything we have in our world in both form or function. It can be upgraded with increased magnification, increased rate of fire, and increased rocket speed. With the magnification upgrade, it has the highest magnification of any weapon in the game. The name makes sense because the rockets emit a red light when flying and detonating, giving it its unique name. This weapon is interesting because of how it looks and how it operates. The old world American flag on the front, hammering home the connection to the line in the Star Spangled Banner, speaking about the rocket's red glare. The rocket canisters also have 13 rockets, which is either an allusion to the 13 original colonies, or the 13 commonwealths that the United States was broken up into right up to the time of the Great War. It has a scope that retracts upon reloading, which is a cool addition, but the player can look through the sight while reloading for some reason. There is no visible trigger that the player engages when firing, and both ends of the weapon will retract into a compact form when holstered on the back. Interestingly, the buttons and digital displays on the side don't seem to correspond to anything blinking and displaying numbers at random. These exact lights and displays can be found on the laser detonator that is also found in Lonesome Road that causes the warheads to explode. I would love to hear what you think these lights and displays may refer to, since they don't seem to refer to distance, status, or anything else that may be relevant to the user. If you can get your hands on one of these, can repair it to full condition, and put all the upgrades on it, it makes it the most valuable weapon in the whole game in regards to its cap value, which can be sold for a staggering 46,000 caps. The Broadsider is a unique weapon introduced in Fallout 4 and present in Fallout 76 as well. I can't really explain its purpose better than the in-game description that states, The Broadsider is the answer to that age-old question. Would it be fun to walk around and shoot people with a portable naval cannon? Yes. Yes it would. And, you know, I can't say that I would disagree. It is a cannon that appears to have been fitted with recoil dampeners that also function to swing the cannon down so it can be muzzle loaded more easily. There is also an electronic firing system built into the frame to detonate whatever explosive charge there is to shoot the cannon. 
I had a really hard time finding an exact real world match for the cannon as it doesn't seem to be patterned after any British naval designs, even though it bears the royal cipher for King George II, who ruled from 1727 to 1760, and the cannons on the constitution don't look like the broadsider. Given that it can be carried by a single person, it is likely that it is a swivel gun, which are smaller in size and weight than conventional cannons. However, it is interesting to note that most swivel cannons were breech loaded by the time this would have been made, which, going by the royal cipher, was in the 18th century. So that is another odd aspect about this weapon. A typical weight for a swivel gun was around 90 pounds or 40 kilograms, which is already difficult to hold for an extended period of time, let alone aim properly. When looking at the frame and dampening equipment, even if it's built out of the lightest materials, it would have also been fairly heavy, making the whole unit quite heavy for a single weapon. And that's not even taking into account carrying the required ammunition. This takes three upgrades, a light barrel, steady grip, and a multi-shot canister. The multi-shot canister adds a large canister to the bottom of the weapon to allow three shots before reloading. How exactly this works without blowing the canister off, I don't know. And the fact that the user only ever loads a cannonball and no explosive charge is also baffling. I don't know exactly how these cannonballs are supposed to be propelled. These cannonballs explode on impact, and there are in-game files that show that there were different ammo types intended for this weapon, with even more shown in the concept art. In Fallout 76, the generically named 50 cal machine gun is modeled directly after an M2 Browning 50 caliber machine gun. The weapon was designed in our world just after World War I, and it is still in service with some modifications in the US and other armies today. It shouldn't be surprising, but it uses the 50 caliber round and has been modified with extra grips to enable it to be carried and operated by one person. In game, it is labeled as being 18 pounds, but is around 84 pounds or 38 kilograms in real life. It can be upgraded with the so-called heavy barrel that increases damage. The funny thing about the name of this upgrade is that the original barrel is actually referred to in our world as the heavy barrel, with the so-called heavy barrel in Fallout having the ported and shorter barrel of the aircraft version of the gun. This version is called the AN-M2, which took advantage of the fact that they were fixed to a plane moving through the air to allow for effective air cooling of the barrels through the shorter ported barrel. That ironically was much lighter than the standard barrel on the normal M2. Two unique variants exist. The Action Hero, which has the two-shot legendary effect, and the Final Word, which has the anti-armor legendary effect. Fallout Tactics also has the M2 as an option in the game, and it is named the Browning M2, and is the most damaging and longest ranged machine gun in the game except for the MEC Goss minigun. The Rock It launcher, introduced in Fallout 3, is one of the few craftable weapons in the game. This is, of course, not to be confused with the Rocket launcher, and it's most likely the reason for the name change in Fallout 4 and 76 to the Junk Jet. It consists of a vacuum, leaf blower, fire hose nozzle, and a conductor, and is assembled into something where the vacuum component is worn on the back, with a hose leading to the gun-like component where the ammunition is dropped into the top and held before being shot out of the short barrel. This thing can shoot almost anything with weight, so weightless items like pencils cannot be used as ammo. It is also interesting because all items do the same amount of damage despite their weight or hardness, so a teddy bear is just as likely to blow the brains out of a raider as a baseball. Some interesting facts are that the items that are shot out of the weapon will be oriented however they are when they are sitting on a surface. So wrenches will be flat and horizontal, and teddy bears will be propped up. Only the player character can use the weapon, as it is specifically marked as a player-only weapon in-game. Lastly, the Rock It launcher can launch items that are too big to fit through the barrel, like motorcycle gas tanks, which is just some real Fallout physics right there. I want to take a second to try and understand exactly how this is supposed to work though. Perhaps the vacuum on the back is meant to hold the compressed air from the leaf blower. Or perhaps the vacuum and leaf blower both work to compress air that is used to fire the projectiles. The least likely option, I think, would be that the vacuum does operate as a vacuum, creating a vacuum behind the object to be fired. 
The vacuum is opened up and the influx of air propels the object forward, similar to how homemade ping pong ball launchers function. The junk jet of Fallout 4 has a drastically different look, but also a different origin. Whereas the Rock It launcher's origins are mysterious, surviving only as a series of schematics, the junk jet was purpose built by an Arc Jet Systems technician, who was disgruntled because of being made fun of by others for only having a high school education. He built the contraption and planned to take revenge by using it on his fellow employees, but never got the chance due to the Great War. It no longer has a backpack component, although it appears to still be using compressed air to launch items. It also can be upgraded with an extended barrel, as well as options to cause fire and electrical damage. It is interesting to note that there is no weight or ammo limits, so you could theoretically load it up with thousands of items. However, it still counts against your carry weight. Lastly, the objects arc when shot, and so have a much lower effective range than conventional weapons. Although, theoretically, you could lob objects a good distance, and it will still do damage if you can connect. I want to apologize to everyone in advance. I do not speak French, and I am not familiar with properly spoken French. So with that being said, the show Sha is only shown in Fallout Tactics, and is named and modeled after the real-world weapon. It has the most unusual specs of any weapon on this list, as it is weightless, has a zero round capacity, and has an official damage output of one. Sounds strange for a light machine gun, doesn't it? Well, it was included by the developers as a joke, with an in-game description explaining, Renowned as the worst machine gun ever issued to any army at any time in history. This does not seem like a personal bias from the developers, as many historians have this same opinion of this World War I era weapon. It developed a bad rap when the thin metal magazines that were open on one side allowed mud and gunk to jam the weapon easily. It also would overheat and the barrel sleeve would stay in the retracted position until it cooled sufficiently and was inoperable for this duration. Due to this, it was quickly dropped from service, and it seems like there are a few firearms enthusiasts among the developers of Tactics that wanted to throw this easter egg in there for us. Alright guys, I'm gonna do it and you can't stop me. The 44 caliber heavy machine gun is a weapon in Fallout Brotherhood of Steel that looks like the love child of an M249 light machine gun and an Uzi. It fires the very specifically named large bullet which I'm guessing is a 44 caliber bullet because, well, it's in the name. But this must be a common rifle round in this game because the 44 round in our universe is just a large pistol round. I hope the mentioning of Fallout Brotherhood of Steel doesn't offend too many of your sensibilities. Please don't stop watching my videos because I mentioned that game. The harpoon gun featured in the Fallout 4 DLC Far Harbor does exactly what one would expect a harpoon gun to do. It shoots tennis balls. When looking at a possible design inspiration, I found one that was decently close, although I think the design is mostly original. This doesn't seem to have been mass produced, and is a museum piece that served some time on a steam whaler ship called the Resolute before it sank in 1886. The fallout weapon was likely mounted on a ship, hence the large size and grips that necessitate a two-handed configuration. It looks like harpoons are fired by compressed gas, which is never used or topped off like many of the other weapons that use a form of compressed gas like the shish kebab. It can fire one large harpoon or be modified to fire fletchets, which are seven simultaneously fired smaller arrow-like projectiles giving it a shotgun-like effect. Barbed harpoons increase damage as well, but they and the fletchets move at a lower speed. This weapon can pin dismembered body parts like the railway rifle and fires one, quote, harpoon when shooting the fletchets. It is also interesting to note that the harpoon gun was slated to appear in the base game as part of a 20 Leagues Under the Sea quest that was cut from the game. It was a simply textured model in the base game and looks drastically different from the version introduced in Far Harbor. It also looks like it would have allowed for multiple shots per reload, which would be nice, but also probably not considered a big gun. Fallout Tactics has the only instance of a Bren gun, which was a real-life World War II era light machine gun used mainly by the British, and is called the Bren gun in-game. It uses the same 303 round as it did in real life, and is a decent mid-game weapon. 
Fallout 76 is the lone source for the Hellstorm missile launcher, which was introduced with the Steel Dawn update. It looks a lot different from the normal missile launcher and can launch 4-6 to six missiles depending on the modifications. It otherwise functions like the normal missile launcher and takes a very strong inspiration from the M202 Flash rocket launcher, which was a design meant to replace the flamethrower in the post-World War II US Army by firing incendiary rockets. The XM202 was the prototype used in the Vietnam War, but has never gained a lot of traction because of the bulkiness of the rounds and relative unreliability of the system. That said, it has been in limited service and is listed as one of the weapons that was used in the Afghanistan conflict. The weapon was recovered by the Appalachian Brotherhood of Steel from a government facility and has a Brotherhood of Steel logo and some tally marks from confirmed kills on the side. What those kills could be? Who knows? But I could totally see a Brotherhood of Steel chump boosting his stats by nuking rad rats or something. If anyone would be a bunch of stat patterns in Fallout, it would be the Brotherhood of Steel. One of the most bizarre guns you can find in the Fallout series, which is saying something because, you know, Fallout, the K9000 Cyberdog gun is a blend of Cyberdog and gun. While this seems like an unusual and unnecessary combination, it was created at Big Mountain, so that really should explain everything. This weapon is completely unique to Fallout, with the dog brain providing aid by detecting enemies. In fact, it is so good at detecting enemies that if you point in the direction of an enemy that is far out of visual range, the gun will detect the enemy and growl accordingly. It uses 357 ammo, which is strange for an automatic heavy weapon, and has two reciprocating barrels, like some anti-aircraft guns, in an attempt to control the kick. It also holds the distinction of being the only fully automatic big gun that has a telescopic sight that is very steady while shooting. The weapon can be obtained after taking out the trauma harness of an old researcher that claimed it after a rescue team left it behind in a state of panic. The fire rate can be increased with the K9000 Mentat Chow, which has very interesting implications, meaning that the rate of fire and probably some other things are not mechanically determined, but electrically, or in this case, bioelectrically. The K9000 Wrestler Royal modification increases damage and is an obvious Scooby-Doo reference. There is only one other Cyberdog gun in the game called Fido, which fires 44 caliber rounds and the brain case and scope are red instead of green, with the decal on the side being a bulldog. So that will do it for this video. But don't worry if I didn't mention your favorite big gun, it is likely coming in part 2. So on to the comment highlights for my last video that covered the processed and packaged foods of Fallout. The first highlight was one of many that drew my attention to something I completely overlooked, and that is the cereal Sugar Bombs is also a prominent cereal in the Calvin and Hobbes comic, with the full name of Chocolate Frosted Sugar Bombs, but often just called Sugar Bombs in the comic series. That was a big miss on my part, so all of you that are calling me out for not mentioning it, I'm glad you did. I asked you all to tell me what you thought you saw in the dusty old box, and I was surprised by how many of you really saw a TV dinner. I think a bunch of you are just a bunch of filthy liars, but I can't prove it yet, so it looks like you're going to get away with it for now. There are some pretty imaginative things that people saw, but there was one person that completely vindicated me and saw exactly what I did, so I may have just found a long lost brother or something. Oxbigley2010 mentioned that a long lived brand of trading cards called Wacky Packages had a card that referenced its parody of Spam and it too was called Cram. I have never heard of these cards, but the first ones were sold in the 1960s, and they were released as late as 2014, which is pretty cool. I found the Cram card, which I found quite funny, and think it could absolutely be the inspiration for Fallout's Cram. A few of you pointed out that I incorrectly stated that Theodore Collins could not be reasoned with, and was only hostile towards the player after they figured out he was mixing in feral ghoul meat to his product. This is not the case, and the sole survivor can strike a deal with him for a certain number of caps to keep a secret. I looked up why, even on my pacifist playthroughs, I never had this option, and apparently that is because he will try to negotiate with the player only after losing a certain amount of health. I think I must have just killed him too fast or headshotted him when he was up in his office area while he was hostile, killing him instantly and never letting me experience an alternative ending. 
A few of you correctly let me know that the face on the cheesy poofs was none other than Bing Crosby. And this picture came from promotional material for the Bing Crosby show for Chesterfield cigarettes. I knew at least one of you would know where the picture came from, and I was not disappointed. I am seriously impressed by the things that you all know. Some others mentioned that the gumdrops packaging is reminiscent of the original Wasteland Games start menu graphic, and I can definitely see that. That would be a strong and very plausible connection due to the influence Wasteland has had on the Fallout series and its development, with many considering the first Fallouts a spiritual successor of the Wasteland games. There were a lot of comments, and too much good stuff to include all in one video. You guys are seriously awesome. Please keep commenting and giving me cool insights, your personal anecdotes, and of course, corrections when I inevitably goof up. Please, take care of yourselves, and carry forth the good news of Adam.